This video is to step you through how to solve a linear programming example. This is the, the first example I'm going through. I just went through in my previous video how to solve it graphically. Uh, we set up the area of feasibility, we set up the problem itself on paper, and then we um, made what are called the isoprofit lines and solve for where they uh, where the optimal point was graphically. Let's now do this in Excel using what's called Solver. So if you'll see on my screen, I have uh, a basic template set up. Uh, the very first thing that I define is what's called my objective function. So I have a cell here for that. We'll talk more about that later. And then next, I'm going to define my variables. Uh, I'm going to put my variables in here. These will be my variables. Uh, and then next, my constraints. So basically, like I define the problem on paper, I'm going to do kind of a similar format in Excel. Now, product A and product B, these are where we're going to have our actual um, amounts of each produced. Okay. Um, we don't know what those are going to be yet, so I'm going to leave those blank, but I'm going to cell reference them everywhere else. Okay, profit per unit for each item uh, is going to be the following. We know that product A brings in $20 per unit, product B $30 per unit. Um, we saw that previously um, in this example. And uh, again, you can see the examples written down below here. We have $20 for product A, $30 for product B. And then um, we also have these constraints. So molding, we have a maximum of 210 hours in molding, 200 hours in the paint shop, 120 hours in finishing. And for shipping, we can ship a maximum of 40 of uh, product A. Now, molding, um, I'm going to put in the a number of hours per um, unit for product A first. So product A takes three hours in molding, four hours at the paint shop, one hour in finishing. Product B, uh, three hours in molding, two hours in the paint shop, two hours in finishing. Okay. Now you could set up your problem different than this. Uh, this is just kind of a, a template that I would recommend. Uh, and then from here, what we're going to do is the following. We're going to say, okay, so molding is going to be three, uh, which is in B9, times by the number of units of product A made, which we don't know yet. We're going to solve for that after. And it's going to be three hours per unit times by the number of units of product B, which again, we don't know, but we're going to put those numbers produced in cells B5 and C5. Okay, now if we lock things accordingly, if we lock the B5 and the C5, okay, let's just lock both of them like that, then we can copy this formula down. Okay, and um, then for each um, equation, it's going to multiply the number of uh, hours required times the number of items for each. Okay, and this will be the amount of each resource we are using. So for now, it's zero and zero because we have nothing here or here. Let's say if we did produce uh, 20 units, and 50 units, uh, then we'll notice that our, our used changes here. But for now, we'll leave those blank. Okay, what we also have, or what we're able to get, is the profit, which is $20 uh, per item of product A times the number of them, plus $30 per item of product B times the number of product B produced. And again, it shows up as nothing until we again put in values. You might recognize these values from the previous video. These were actually the optimal values that I found, the 20 and the 50, um, were what we found by doing this uh, solution graphically. Um, okay, let's just pull those out for now. Let's assume we don't have them yet. Uh, lastly is shipping. We can ship up to 40 units of product A. Okay, now, um, 
that's not actually where we're going to put it though now what we're going to do really our equation is uh, i'm just going to scroll down a bit so we can see it here uh, xa is less than or equal to 40 well that's like one times by xa and that is less than or equal to 40 so here we're going to do one times by the number of items of product a produced and that can go up to a maximum of 40. There are 40 available spots in shipping for product A. Okay, now that everything is set, we're ready to use Excel's solver tool, which is under data uh, and solver. If you don't see solver in there automatically, go into file, options, add-ins, And then all the way down to the bottom, manage the Excel add-ins, click go and click off solver. So if it's unchecked, check it and click OK. And hit cancel because I already have it in there. Um, and then it will show up under the data tab right here. So I'm going to go click on it right now. Uh, and here's what I do. So my objective, which is also my objective function, is my profit. And I would like to maximize it. If this were, let's say, a cost, I'd want to minimize it. Uh, and then my changing cells are my variable cells, my variables, which are these number produced. There is nothing in those cells yet, but it's cells B5 and C5. So we'll highlight those for my changing cells. And now, um, forgive me, my constraints are already in there from before. I'm just going to pull them out, pretend you don't see those. Okay, now my constraints, um, I need to add those in. So I'm going to add my constraints. My first one is going to be my molding. My amount use needs to be less than or equal to the available. So D9 is less than or equal to E9. Click add if we want to keep going. And then my paint number of paint hours is going to be less than or equal to 200. Click add. Uh, time spent in finishing is less than or equal to 120. Click add and then the um, shipping is less than or equal to 40. Click OK. OK, and now I have all my constraints entered in and also check off to make our variables non-negative. This is important. And we can use simplex LP. LP stands for linear programming. That's what we're doing right now. And then click on solve. Oh, and the objective cell sometimes there we go. Sometimes when you click around, something changes on you. Uh, for some reason, this guy had changed to G14. At some point, I must have clicked on G14. Sorry. So if you get anything like that, go look through everything and make sure your objective's okay. Everything's okay. Uh, so yes, my objective is in D2. I want to maximize my profit. My changing cells are okay. Everything else is okay. Now click solve. And here we go. Keep my solver solution. Ideally, to generate all those reports. Later on in a future video, I'm going to explain those sensitivity reports and what they mean. Um, okay. And click OK. You can also click Save Scenario if you want. I'm going to call it um, Scenario 1. We don't have to yet, but you can do that if you'd like. And then click OK. Good. And you'll notice that we found 20 and 50 for our optimal number produced, which gave us a profit of 1900. That is what we also found previously in the written and graphical version of this solution.